Next, I'm going to create another theoretical top outside edge. And I'm going to use some of my previous geometry as reference elements, as we've seen before, to create a nice and um, family oriented shape, meaning I'm creating a master and several children based off of those master shapes to represent the uh, next piece that I'm going to build. So everything will be nicely proportional based off of that input. So now, as you can see, I have a curve that's located at this theoretical. Well, the curves that make that are this curve and another curve down here. So using uh, at least one of those as a reference, I'm going to try to produce another curve that will match this top edge. So I'll true up my view, take a look at it. As we can see, this curve here, let me go ahead and hide this, is an offset to get to this top edge. But it's not a constant offset, it is a linear offset. So what I like to do is use a law value that's a linear transition. Now to get that, I'm going to go over, right mouse click, find a work object. I am going to go to parallel curve. I'm going to pick my first 3D curve. And I'm going to go to law. I'm going to go to linear, and here I'm just going to type in some arbitrary numbers, preview. And as we can see, this linear law gets me pretty close. Let me select OK. Now if I zoom up, you can see that I may have to clean it up a little bit here, bring it down a little bit, and same thing with this end over here, maybe bring it down a little bit. So let me center graph. And rather than going through and double clicking on it, I can now modify the values in the tree. So if I take this, let's say I want this at 18. Okay, a little too far. Let's set 19. Come to this other end. And don't click on that. We'll make this one four. And you'll note that it starts to pull away in this area over here. So I'll just double click on this curve. Uh, this is going to allow me to modify the shape. And bring this center down a little bit, a little closer. Now that I have that next curve in place, this curve with my parallel, I need to draw in this curve or this shape. So I will true up my view. I will come in. Now it's a little difficult for me to see this, so I'm just going to go into my view, lighting. And I'm going to change the direction of my light to give me a better view of what I'm drawing on. Now, this is one of those where I'm going to create another proportional offset. So this is going to be paralleled out. So I'll go into parallel. This 3D curve. Reverse it. Let me pull this out to roughly where I want it to go and see. Okay, not too bad. A little bit of deviation here and there, but I think it's acceptable. My OK. Define a work object inside of my Theo curves and generate another combine. Combine this parallel, this parallel, and 
Now that I have that combined in, I will go ahead and make my slab. So I will go to my slabs work or, uh, work set to find a work object. I will go ahead and generate another sweep. Another circle sweep. Two guides in a radius. Guide one, guide two, and I will use this curve as a spine, preview, and I will go to the next until I get to the correct surface, and let me shrink this down a little bit. Okay, so now I have my next surface in. And as we can see, it's a little bit off in this area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this first sweep and I'm going to re reduce the value of that radius a bit to see if we can get it to come out some. A little bit more. So this is where the parametrics is really nice. I can begin playing around with my numbers. I can begin modifying those surfaces and quickly get the shape that I need. Now, if I go down to my initial shape, at the very bottom here, this 3D curve, I double click on it. What this is going to allow me to do is come in, and now you'll notice that just a little bit of movement, let me make sure this is oriented correctly, just a little bit of movement is going to cause my surfaces to zebra stripe a little bit better. Okay, and I'll do the same thing with this curve Oops, here. Am I okay do a quick little analysis on this and as we can see matches pretty good and I could play around with these numbers a whole heck of a lot more in positions and locations of those curves to get it to go really close now as you look this sweep begin to really pull away at this back end. So what I'm going to do with my circle sweep is I'm going to double click on it. And once again, I'm going to use a law value. This is going to be a linear law. And this is for the radius of the circle sweep. So I'll change this to 100 and hit OK. See what happens. All right. So I wasn't sure about the didn't take linear say 100 all right so there's my 100 there's my 200 so for this one say 100 and this one I'll do 200. So now it's just a question of going back and forth and playing around with those values. As you can see here, this is really tightened up to get pretty darn close to that shape. And for this one, it gets a little flatter up front, so I'll go 200. As we can see, it matches fairly closely. 